all right guys so after doing all of what um you know was made mention in the previous video where you needed to plot um well you need to calculate t square um no i went ahead and i you know put in my scale and um the next best thing is for me to uh, draw the line of best fit all right so that's what we're going to do now all right line of best fit now typically your aim is to pass your line through as much points as you can and if not you try to balance the points on either side of the line that are not close enough to the line of best fit sometimes it can definitely be tricky um, with the the computer model right um, so it passed through two points um, might can be adjusted a little bit who knows um, it's not going to be perfect from this standpoint but at the end of the day at the end of the day you kind of want your line to pass through as much points as possible and then the ones that did not pass through um there must be a balancing uh number so to speak so like under under the line here this point is possibly the only one um beyond the or below the line so you would expect that to make it become a line of best fit really you should have at least only one above which is this one all right in terms of the points that are not passing through the line there should be an even distribution above and below so to speak in terms of the points that did not pass through the line of best fit so we can work with this um the next best thing guys is for us to uh, calculate the gradient all right and um the gradient here you generally uh would uh, find um two two new points really on the on the line so this one looks a little bit as a it looked like an easy point to to identify so you can just go ahead and mark an x right here for the gradient as the first point um you also want to try to make the gradient uh line um or the, the points that you're picking for the for the for the gradient they should at least Uh, represent at least 50% of the line we could go ahead and draw uh, a triangle just to get a better um, viewpoint of where your points are located really right this will show you exactly where those um, gradient points are located course this is kind of a little bit tricky um, doing it on the computer but either way see if I can adjust it right so I think that's the best I can get it at um, so with that being said now the, qu the question went ahead and then plot the graph and it says go ahead and determine the gradient of the line which is what we're going which is what we're basically doing now we know that gradient um is pretty much the rise over the run which is you subtracting y2 minus y1 from x2 minus x1 so what we need to do now is to read the points here so um 
whenever you're writing coordinates, so to speak, we generally write the x variable first. So we're going to consider this to be our x1 and this is going to be our y1. So let's look at it now. So on my x uh, axis, this is showing me um, 0 0.35. And then on my uh, y axis, it's showing me 1.4. Um, now, similarly, you can go ahead and um, uh, do the same thing for the second point. All right. So for the second point, which is, you know, x2, y2, we can see that for x2, that's going to be 0 0.75. And um, for y2, that's pretty much going to be... Uh, so this would be 3, so it's going to be about 3.1, 3.1. So the aim now is to go into this formula, the gradient formula. So you locate what is uh, y, y2, which is 3.1. And you find what is uh, y1, which is 1.4. Divide that by x2. x2 is 0 0.74 minus uh, x1 which is 0 0.35 sorry this is so x2 is 0 0.75 0 0.75 now we just go ahead and just do the maths right so let's see if we will get the value um, for uh, for G. Um, so let's see here. So the the, the numerator is one point um, seven. The denominator is. pretty much 0 0.4 so we're going to divide that fraction now so pretty much our m value which is the gradient is equal to 4 point um, uh, 25 all right now with that being said with that being said, we have that value. We're going to use that to our advantage now to find the value of G. In a typical sense, guys, an experiment like this with a simple pendulum is for us to really find the, the value for G, which is the acceleration due to gravity. All right, so let's see how best we can do that. So what you would do here is to recall that your gradient is equal to 4 pi squared divided by g now by transposition we can make g become the subject so g is now equal to 4 pi squared divided by m where m is the gradient so g is equal to 4 pi squared divided by 4.25 now we want to see if our um, experiment was a good experiment, right? Uh, because we know the value of uh, of g to some extent, which is the acceleration due to gravity, um, and the theoretical value would have been uh, nine point eight uh, meters per second squared. But for this particular experiment, we're getting 9.2 um, uh, uh, 9, right, um, meters per second squared. So give and take, of course, this is not a bad experiment because it is close within uh, the 9.8 region for the most part. But of course, you know, we're doing an experiment, there are errors that we will expect.
So of course, you know, as a physicist and a, stu uh, a physics a student, you must then explain why this value would have um, been less than the theoretical value. And that accounts to the errors. As you can imagine, you're taking um, different readings, right? Your, your timer, which is your stopwatch, has uh, an uncertainty. So that could be the possible reason why our values are off for the most part. So this completes that. Now the question says, use your value of G. If they say use your value of G, it's the one that you would have uh, just determined, which is this. And it says, calculate the time, the value of T when the length is 0 0.9. So you would go back to this equation that says t or the period is equal to 2 pi um, times the square root of L divided by G. And what you would simply do is to plug in those values, right? So the length is 0 0.9. The gradient is 9.3, all right? No, just a way of this quick calculation, really. So we get um, all right. In this case, we're seeing that the period is one point nine five. Now, this is the time taken to complete one oscillation when the length is 0 0.9 however they actually want to find the value of t which is simply the time taken to complete 10 oscillations so simply put we just multiply the number of oscillations by the period and that would then give us um, 19.5 seconds all right and that would complete this aspect of the question hope you guys learned something uh, of course tell a friend to tell a friend that we are doing physics over here and these are stuff that you would generally see in a typical physics exam or stuff that you will do sometimes in a lab so to speak so this is obviously a general um thing it doesn't apply only to cape physics i mean um uh, a level physics does it as well so hopefully this content um, has helped you comment below um, hit the subscribe button for more um, interesting videos and tell us what you want us to do all right and so that we can make it uh, more interactive of course all right so that's it right now for a, another lesson or another session of uh, race tutoring j thank you guys